We are live at Red Moon Sound Studio in Knoxville, Tennessee. Our featured artist today is Stranger May. Bought you roses when I came on a Sunday. Watched you spread them out on your front lawn. Cried a thunderstorm and crashed on Monday. Won't be long before your love is gone.
I'm a broken Thank you guys for being here, Katie and Colleen. Thank you. Where does the name Stranger May come from? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> really? Oh, the first question? The first question. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I So my original name for all of the music stuff that I was doing is The Coda Project, which is C-O for Colleen, D apostrophe A for Delelio, and then Coda. Um, it's very confusing. It was very confusing with the spelling, and also 17 million different bands are called oh, Coda something. <laughs> Go figure, man. <laughs> so I was just kind of brainstorming, and I was on like a band name generator one night, and it didn't specifically give me this name, but it just picked out the words from it. And I ran to the dining room table, and I was like, what do you think of this? And you're like, yeah, this, that sounds cool. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Just but so ambivalent. I don't know. It just felt like I was it expecting a way bit. more. Like, well, sorry, there's this. No, it's well, okay. This is what come it as you to are. <laughs> it's totally good. Yeah, it's a name. I don't know. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, auto band generator name yeah. thingy. Dot com. <laughs> you did it. Dot net. Dot org. Dot gov. Right. <laughs> I feel like we should also be sponsored by them. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> so I got to witness you guys actually at. Um, I mean, we were talking about this before the session. I got to witness you guys at Kelsey Walker's listening space. Yeah. And that was the first time that I had heard y'all play together as well. And I just remember sitting next to Ben because Ben was running the sound for that and leaning over and being like, I need them on this session. Like, I need to have them. And he was like, oh, hell yeah, we got this. We got this. But it was just beautiful seeing you guys actually just interact live on stage. And mm. individually, you have beautiful auras. But then together, it just magnifies it. And it's just it was so cool to witness. Um, 
And then I listened to your album and that was when I was like, okay, yeah, this is like solidly, we need them. Oh. And it's so co like sonically different from live, which is really cool. Cause it seems like they exist as separate entities. There's still mm -hmm. this common theme, but I love the, the recorded sessions of, of your work too. <laughs> so that kind of leads me into my question. Um, who does the production? For the recorded stuff. So my friend David, um, he lives in Boston. Okay, cool. Um, and we did 90% of this over Google Drive. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just so, corresponding? Back yeah, and forth. Oh it took God. three years. Um, so we started pre-pandemic and we were all at school together. Okay. And he was a year behind us. Um, and so we met, I think it was like March 6th record your parts yeah. in person and then we all left for spring break and we're like all right when we come back from spring break <laughs> we're gonna get the drums down we're gonna do this we're gonna do this we're gonna... nope nothing ever happened there right right come of back. course right best laid plans yeah so then everyone is like and then we graduated so it was like what do we do now <laughs> so <laughs> so it, the saxophone player is in rochester the drummer is in he met david in ithaca to record that um Producers in Boston, mm -hmm. keys players in New Hampshire, and then we were here. So it was like a whole thing. But David's awesome. I, yeah. He's, he's great. I Shout out him. to David. Shout out to David. We don't know your last name. He's saved Shane. There David it is. Shane. <laughs> David Shane. You've saved my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's he's awesome. awesome. And I feel like we, we're friends anyway, so we just like just chat to chat. And then we're like, oh, All right. right, but the album... This is why it's taken three years. Let's hold on. <laughs> Let's go back that's to what we were doing. Though. That's insane, though. I didn't realize that it yeah. took that long. Because you yeah. guys released that May of this year. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely beautiful. I love that. Thank Whoever you. is listening to this session, go go listen to all of it all the way through multiple times. It's so good. <laughs> I listen to it on Spotify. And I'll ask where everybody else can find the rest of your music, too, or any other stuff. But go listen to it. Do it. Mm -hmm. um, so you you live your queer existence very beautifully on your sleeve, um, mm. very openly. And I wanted to ask how that has kind of impacted your artistry. I, I suppose yeah. a better question is how it didn't, because mm. I know living the queer existence is all encompassing. Mm. So how did it though, if you can answer that? How did it? How did it impact your artistry? I think there's a very specific experience of growing up queer and mm. that whole like realization that you are mm -hmm. and, or that there is something this part of you mm -hmm. that has been shoved down for so long and I think that's a very specific experience that I tend to talk about a lot mm -hmm. in my songwriting and I think I mean I think that just leads to a better awareness of who you are having to question yourself mm -hmm. and go through an entire period of years and years and years where you're like who am I actually yeah. and what does that mean for how I present myself yeah. and how does that mean for how I act and how I speak and how I think like like you said it's all encompassing it's everything, it's everything yeah. but I just I I tend to talk about that a lot and I think that level of kind of introspection lends itself so well to songwriting yeah. also and just being in the moment and yeah yeah, describing that experience, but that's the biggest way I can think of. Probably a bunch of other ways. Yeah, but. <laughs> I know that question is a little broad. I I, mm. I was reluctant to ask it just because mm. it's as as being queer myself. It's hard to even just encapsulate yeah. one thing as being influenced by your queerness. It's mm. like it, your entire existence becomes that, um, and it's just the way you live. Yeah. It's who you are. Yeah, it's everything. Um. So I can hear traces of uh, religiosity. Religiosity. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> <Good word. laughs> That's but, uh, awesome. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and I'm kind of curious, uh, but tell me about that influence. Yeah. How, how you feel that influences your work and your art. I think mainly the imagery. Okay. So I was raised Catholic and that, I mean, talk about beautiful imagery. Just the oh, yeah. stained glass. It's a gorgeous and religion. That. Yes. Yeah. And the, the symbolism of everything yep. and just like i remember having an experience i think it was eighth grade where it was the the priest was literally walking around holding something in like in a cloth so that he wouldn't touch it and he was like offering for people to touch it mm -hmm. and then like you would and you would start crying and it was 
insane. Um, but like, imagine the gravity of just like one little object of right. like how much meaning does one thing have in it? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I think words can be kind of similar in that way where it's like, I, I heard this quote somewhere. This blood was never uh, beautiful or poetic. We assign meaning to it. The blood was never beautiful. It was always just red. Right. And it was, it's like, that. that is what that means to me. It's like, yeah. this is an object, but we assign so much meaning to it that when I touch it, it's literally going to make me cry. So, like, I feel that that level of imagery, I think, has mm -hmm. such a big impact mm -hmm. on everything. So, yeah, it's, it's a topic I like to explore a lot. Good. Yeah. 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 So I hear you have a cute story about your guitar. Can me you tell too. me about it? <laughs> <laughs> so I hear it involves a really adorable mother. <laughs> <laughs> so this guitar belongs to my mom when she was younger. Um, my grandpa, her dad, bought it for her. Um, it's a little Fender thing. He, he played all the time. Um, and when we were kids, we used to like sit in the... In the living room in our pajamas time. while yeah. he would play songs for us. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, but senior year of high school, my mom was like, well, we need to save money for college. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to get you this, like, extravagant right. uh, graduation a car, gift. But... Which I wasn't expecting <laughs> right. anyway. <laughs> but she's like, I feel so bad we're not buying you, like, a $3,000 thing. I'm like, I don't need a three. <laughs> but she, um, so she wrote me a song. Mm -hmm. And she played it for me on this guitar, and then she gave me the guitar. And it was just, oh, it was so nice. <laughs> Does she still play that song for you sometimes? Um, She's only played it for me the once. Yeah. Um, And I think both of us would have trouble remembering the words, but the memory <laughs> lives on of <laughs> her <Right>. playing it. <laughs> yeah. Outside of your art mm -hmm. and the industry, what do you guys find you are most passionate about? different art <laughs> really <laughs> the um, life of a musician i know <laughs> encapsulated yeah well so i i've always been it's always been creative stuff for mm. me always 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 so i danced for a long time okay um cool. from ages three to 17 yep. ish and i did all the whole thing i did modern lyrical point ballet jazz hip-hop i was not good at hip-hop but I did it because it was required. It's all perspective. <laughs> it's all perspective. <laughs> perspective. Um, did competitions and things like that. And I, yeah. I was considering going into that starting high school. I was like, is this something that I want to pursue mm -hmm. as a career? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just so stress, so much stress on your body. Yes. That <laughs> yeah, I heard was, that. Yeah, not for me. No. Um, but I still, I love it and I miss it. And I'm trying to get back into it because it's just the, the like awareness of like where you are yeah and, and the space you... that you take up exactly and, yeah. exactly and and just i don't know exploring like literally this pocket of air like what would it be like to just kind of play with it explore a little explore what that means yeah. you know yeah. that that's so cool to me that and i just doodle and yeah. <laughs> art watercolors i do watercolors yep. a lot yeah I heard we're no. caffeine aficionados as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Love yeah. caffeine. Yeah. Um, I work at a coffee shop, so. Oh, a coffee shop. Status Doe. Nice. Cool. cool. Yeah. Status yeah. Doe. There's a lot of musicians that work there. <laughs> Please. A lot of musicians. <laughs> cool. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it's good stuff. Katie, what about you? Gosh, I've been... I'm putting you on the spot. You yeah. are. Sorry. <laughs> I, I promised I wouldn't. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um... Lately, I've been getting back. Well, so I just graduated with my master's at UT. Congratulations! Thank you. That's no small feat. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I just getting into the master zone. You mm -hmm. don't really have time for yourself. You don't really mm -hmm. have free time. Um, I spent a lot of that time, yes, developing bass and strings and all things that way. But also as a teacher, mm -hmm. I was a music ed major, so just trying to figure out navigate everybody's schedules all the time yep. so i kind of forgot how to have free time and downtime oh, Bubba. Um, <laughs> but i um i've been getting back into my love for the legend of zelda series yes. playing a lot of those video games nice. and nice. Uh, we have a dog who i'm pretty passionate about yeah i guess that was the best <laughs> she's but a new also, little baby right she is yeah. yeah i feel like you're glossing over the fact that not only are you just playing zelda games you are going in timeline order oh my God. <laughs> 
That's a whole thing. Which is a we whole... are meticulous here. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just yeah. mathing it out. Just trying to get it. really immerse myself in the lore and just growing up with that nostalgia. And, yeah. Um, like, I had the GameCube, I had the Wii, I have the Game Boy SP, yep. still have them in working condition, so I'm like, might as well revisit my childhood <laughs> while I'm at it. And, and you're good at them. Just reparenting yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You're indulging the inner child, baby. <laughs> Since I forgot to do that during school, so. <laughs> yeah. For Did any years. of us learn how to do that? Mm-hmm. Like, at all, ever? Good question. <laughs> We're all learning it again. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Well, where can fans find your music? Tell um, me where they can access you and your existence. Yeah, I am most um, active on Instagram. Cool. So, stranger.may.music. Cool. Um, there is a link to my Spotify in there, um, but I'm just Stranger May on Spotify, on YouTube, on all streaming platforms, on Facebook. Um. Am I missing anything? Stranger May on it's TikTok. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. It was thank beautiful. You. you were awesome. Oh, we're so glad you were awesome. here. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. So what song do you guys have next for us? Um, it's one off of my album. Um, it's called Save My Skin. Cool. Um, yeah. Very personal one. <laughs> cool. We're excited to hear it. Cool. <laughs> Saga, just like the ones before you revel in the face of a insecurities and things will hold us down the only difference is the world is turning brown now the weekend's over and i'm feeling sick from last night i got three papers to my brain it never works right i huddle over keys and try to get it done the stuff i write i won't remember when it's gone i feel lost in my head my fourth prescription since i left some of the good old days when i figured out in high school that i might be gay and i'm trying my best but sometimes i feel too much can't get out of bed some days ashamed to tell my teachers that i feel this way this is just how it feels to be my age this is just how it feels to be my up again and I can feel the disappointment classes, homework, rehearsals room for my apartment I just can't seem to learn the way I see my friends do it, it looks easy in my head but when I try I can't do it yet again, I'm writing a to-do list will I really learn something I am I trying to save my skin save my skin I feel lost in my head my fourth prescription since I left, some of the when I figured out in high school that I might be gay And I'm trying my best But sometimes I feel too much Can't get out of bed some days Ashamed to tell my teachers that I feel this way This is just how it feels to be my age This is just how it feels to be my age Thank you.
ya. I'm stronger than 